Hey guys, Thomas Renee here, uh, Head of Voice and Speech at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. It's been a while since I've done a video, so I thought I would do one. Yeah, I want to start looking at the tongue and the different actions of the tongue. So I want to break this video up into two parts. One, we're going to talk a little bit about theory. We're going to talk about uh, the anatomical structures of uh, two muscles of the tongue. And then I want to look at the physiological function of those and hopefully talk a little bit about why they're important to you. Um, okay, so what I want to look at is the genioglossus and the geniohyoid. I want to start with the geniohyoid, uh, mostly because I feel like this is a good muscle to keep working, because one of the other muscles that I'll make another video on, it gets very tight for a lot of us, and it actually restricts our throat and restricts the sound from coming out. So, looking at the geniohyoid, uh, if you've watched some other videos and other videos I'll keep posting, um, we'll talk about the different structures of the body so all of this can kind of come together for you and hopefully all of these different pieces of your anatomy start making sense as an entire holistic, synergistic, coordinated system, yeah? Um, but the geniohyoid, genio meaning chin, so just your chin right here, and then the hyoid being the hyoid bone, I'll do a separate video on that. Um, it's a bone right at the top of the throat here is the only free-floating bone in the body that doesn't attach to another bone directly. And so we're looking at a muscle that actually connects between the base of the chin and the hyoid bone, which is right, right here, like I said, the top of the throat, right above the larynx. Yeah. Um, I'm going to share a, my screen so you guys can see an image. Here we go. That picture out of the way. Oops. So, looking specifically at the geniohyoid for right now, we're seeing the chin. Oops, I just went to a different photo. There we go. We're seeing the chin right here. There's the hyoid bone right there. And if you see these striations of the muscle connecting the two right there, and let me just zoom in for you. I did it again. There you go. And so we're looking at the muscle right between those, if we look at the blue line that I just drew, between the chin and the hyoid bone. And as we uh, know from our studies about muscle, uh, the way the striations go, the way the lines go of the muscle, that's how it contracts and it gets shorter. So when this muscle contracts, it's going to pull the hyoid bone closer to the chin. And when that happens, it's going to bunch the tongue and the tongue is going to stick out. So it's just kind of a primary action of the tongue is sticking our tongue out. Yeah, and when I do it, you can actually see some movement happening right here. That's my hyoid bone coming towards the chin. Excellent. The other one I want to look at is the genioglossus. Genio, again, is the chin, and glossus is a fancy word for tongue. And so what we're really seeing here is pretty much almost the entirety of the tongue, and we're going to talk about way more other things about the tongue. Ah. That entire underbelly of, of the tongue going all the way back. And let me just show you that picture right now so you can see it. Let me share the screen. Excellent. Okay. So let me just erase. Oops. If I can. Oops. There we go. So I just erased what we looked at for the geniohyoid. Now the genioglossus is attaching again to the chin right here. And you'll notice these striations come up and around creating almost like a fan or kind of like a wave, you think of like a wave in the ocean, okay? And I want you to notice that specifically for the genioglossus, they attach to the chin and then they go towards the tip, um, back up and then curled towards the front of the body, towards the tip of the tongue. And so this muscle doesn't actually attach to anything besides the chin. Wow. Here's a clear image, perhaps. We're zooming in. We just cut out right here, down here, is that um, geniohyoid, so it's not really in good view right now. But with the genioglossus, like I said, it attaches right here behind that chin bone, front of the mandible, the jaw. 
and it pulls back and you can see it, the striations, those, uh, those lines in the muscle curving up all the way. And that's pretty much the, almost the entirety of the tongue there, yeah? And so when we're thinking of that wave, like I said, with muscle, with stri the way the striations move, when it contracts, they shorten. So if we have this wave, the striations of the wave, if they're gonna shorten from here to here, it's actually gonna pull the tongue back in. So if you think about my tongue, or your tongue, I should say, yeah? And we have that wave action, that wave shape. If this contracts, if that muscle contracts, it's going to pull the tongue back in because it's gonna get shorter like this. Yeah, and so then that's gonna be pulled right back into the mouth. Now, for the specificity of how we're working with these muscles, when you're pulling it back into the mouth, I want you to think of it just coming right back to sit behind the bottom teeth. We're not going to retract the tongue back into the throat. That's gonna be a separate muscle that I wanna look at in a different video, okay? So for practicality purposes, one of a simple, simple, simple exercise, but I think it's so important for us to do to get a kinesthetic awareness of these muscles is actually just go back and forth, contracting the geniohyoid and then the genioglossus. And so the exercise might look like this, slow to start, uh, so you can get uh, just an awareness of these muscles and how they work, yeah? Okay? Good. As you do this, I want you to be mindful to try not to move that jaw so you're really isolating the tongue muscles. Okay. If uh, you want something a little bit more structured, yeah, they usually just do some counts. Yeah, as soon as you get a better idea of how that tongue is moving, you can start doing a little bit more quickly. So it might happen like this. So you can uh, start doing that in your warm-ups and your personal practices to get a, to develop a sense and awareness of that muscle and how that works. Uh, there's a lot of things that this is going to be good for. One, we're just kind of balancing out all of those antagonistic muscles of, this, of the speech mechanism. Um, also, all of these muscles that we talk about in the tongue are somehow related to any speech sound that we might be exploring in any accent and in any language. So just getting an understanding of them individually as separate parts of an entire system uh, is going to be helpful for you so that when you start creating specific speech sounds and looking at a particular speech sound, you can see all the different parts uh, and all the different muscular actions that are gonna go into that speech sound. Uh, the more awareness and the more control you have of your tongue, the better you're gonna be at your speech practice, okay? Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a good one and keep practicing. I'll talk to you soon.